Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry webcast. Today we're talking about oxidation numbers and how to assign them. So what I'd like to do is to review the rules for assigning oxidation numbers and do a number of practice problems so you feel really comfortable ass assigning these. You need to be able to assign the oxidation number for any atom in a compound. It's really not that hard, but we do need to go through the rules. So let's get right to it. Rule number one says that uncombined elements, anything in its elemental state, has an oxidation number of zero. For example, let's think about nitrogen gas. It's not combined with anything. It's an element. Its oxidation number is zero. Similarly, magnesium metal has an oxidation number of zero. It's that easy. Rule number two says for a monatomic ion, so an ion that is made up of only one atom, the charge of the ion is its oxidation number. So, for example, if we think about the magnesium ion, it's got a charge of plus two, and that's its oxidation number as well. If we think about the fluoride ion, it's got a charge of minus one, and that's its oxidation number as well. So if it's a monatomic ion and you can unambiguously predict its charge from its location on the periodic table, that will be its oxidation number. Rule number three deals with fluorine. Fluorine is also unambiguous. In a compound, we assign fluorine an oxidation number of minus one, always. All right, there are no exceptions. All right, so for example, if we look at sodium fluoride, the fluorine has an oxidation number of minus one. We're treating it as if it's ionic, which in this case it actually is. And the sodium has an oxidation number actually of plus one because it's a monatomic ion. We can actually write that in. All right, and we often write them uh, oxidation numbers floating above the formula. So the fluorine has an oxidation number of minus one. In our next example, HF, all right, the fluorine also has an oxidation number of minus one. So if it's fluorine, you just give it a minus one and you're set and you're ready to move on. Let's go on and talk about our next rule, which is hydrogen. Hydrogen atoms in a compound usually, but not always, have an oxidation number of plus one. Okay, so if we look at the molecule NH3, commonly known as ammonia, there are three hydrogen atoms and each one of them has an oxidation number of plus one. All right, if we go back to our HF molecule that we looked at in the previous slide, we learned that the fluorine has an oxidation number of minus one, and the hydrogen here has an oxidation number of plus one. So you just know the rules, and you're able to apply them, and you can write those oxidation numbers in just above the formula. Okay, now that's usually true that oxidation numbers uh, of hydrogen are usually plus one. There's one major exception. In metal hydrides, where hydrogen is actually the anion. All right, in that case, the hydrogen has an oxidation number of minus one. For example, if we look at lithium hydride, lithium is a group one metal cation. It's got an oxidation number of plus one because that's the charge that it forms. It transferred an electron to the hydrogen, which accepted it. So the lithium ion is plus one. The hydride here is minus one. So it doesn't happen all that often. We don't encounter them on an everyday basis, but you need to know that there is this exception for the metal hydrides. All right, let's go on and talk about oxygen. Oxygen in a compound usually, but not always, has an oxidation number of minus two. Okay, so let's look at an example, water. Now we just learned in the previous couple of slides that hydrogen normally has an oxidation number of plus one, and it does here. All right, the oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two, piece of cake. All right. Usually, oxygen will be minus two. For most of the circumstances you encounter, for most of the compounds you encounter, there's one very important exception, the peroxides. All right. And in peroxides, the oxidation number is minus one. If you think back to the formula of the peroxide ion, there are two oxygen atoms sharing that overall minus two charge. So we can think of each oxygen as having a minus one. So if we look at hydrogen peroxide, Hydrogen is usually plus one, and it is. But for the peroxide ion, each oxygen is minus one. There's one other exception for oxygen. This is not going to show up very frequently, but I feel like I should mention it anyway. In superoxides, the oxidation number is minus a half. So we normally think of oxidation numbers, we're usually thinking integers, but that's not really required. In the superoxide ion, which is really important biologically, uh, two oxygen atoms share a minus one charge, 
which means you can think of each oxygen atom as having a minus one-half charge. That's the way to think about it. So if you form potassium superoxide, which is very, very reactive, all right, the potassium, being a group one metal cation, has an oxidation number of plus one, a charge of plus one. And the superoxide, each oxygen has a minus one-half. So we can think about it that way. This is not an exception that's going to show up very frequently, but I thought I should mention it. All right, for a neutral molecule, the sum of the oxidation numbers is zero. We looked at H2O when we were talking about our example of how to assign oxidation numbers for oxygen. We know the hydrogen's plus one. We know the oxygen's minus two. Well, there are two hydrogens at plus one each, and the minus two from the oxygen, and that adds up to zero. So for a neutral molecule, the sum of the oxidation numbers is always zero. This is a really handy rule, because there are a lot of elements where we don't have one simple prediction for the charge of an ion it's likely to form. We may be able to do lots of things. And that's when we can find this rule. For example, ammonia. All right, we said the hydrogen, all right, each hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one because that's typically what hydrogen does. Nitrogen can actually do a lot of different things. But with rule six, we can say, oh, all right, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to add up to zero. So whatever the oxidation number is for nitrogen plus the three plus ones from the hydrogens, they have to add up to zero, which means the nitrogen in ammonia has to have an oxidation number of minus three. So we can figure out lots of different things. Um, and so for our elements that can form multiple ions or they can form polyatomic ions, maybe more than one polyatomic ion and a monatomic ion, we can use, the, use this rule to figure out the oxidation number. It's really handy. Our last rule is very similar, but it deals with polyatomic ions. If you have a polyatomic ion, the sum of the oxidation numbers will not be zero. It will be the overall charge of the ion. Let's look at the chlorate ion as an example. Oxygen, we know, has an oxidation number of minus two. All right, but we don't know an oxidation number for the chlorine. Chlorine can do lots of different things. It's not a monatomic ion here, so it's not minus one. Um, we know there are three oxygen atoms, and we know the sum of the oxidation numbers has to add up to minus one. All right, so we can just do some algebra and solve for the oxidation number of the chlorine. All right, so the oxidation number of the chlorine plus three times minus two have to add up to minus one because that's the overall charge, and so the overall oxidation number of the chlorine in the chlorate ion must be plus five. Let's do some practice problems. Let's think about calcium sulfide. Looking at the periodic table, I see that calcium's in group two. It's a group two metal cation. They typically form ions with a plus two charge, a monatomic ion, so its oxidation number is plus two. Sulfur here is a monatomic ion, the sulfide ion. It's got a minus two charge, and so that's its oxidation number. Oh, you're saying, this is way too easy. Give me something more complicated. All right, if you feel ready for it, that's what we'll do. Let's look at sodium nitrite, okay? So again, you want to keep your periodic table handy. Pause this, try it on your own, and then I'll go through the answer with you. Okay, did you do that? Great, so here's what we know. We know sodium's a group one metal cation. It's going to form a plus one charge for its monatomic ion. So the oxidation number of sodium is plus one. We know the oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two most of the time. This isn't one of the exceptions. So I've got two oxygens actually with a minus two oxidation number for each, but I'm going to write down that the oxidation number is minus two. You do it on a per atom basis. I don't know what the nitrogen is here. It can do lots of things. But what I do know is that some of the oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. So I don't know the nitrogen, but I do know that the oxidation number of nitrogen plus the one from the sodium plus two times minus two from the oxygens have to add up to zero. A little algebra, and I find that nitrogen here has an oxidation number of plus three. Great, let's go on and do another example. Let's look at a polyatomic ion. Okay, so actually I've got a clue down here at the bottom because I didn't sequence things properly, but that's fine. I know the oxygens each have to have an oxidation number of minus two because that's typically what they do and this isn't one of the exceptions. So. The sulfur, I don't have a real rule for sulfur. Sulfur can have a range of oxidation numbers, um, but I do know that the sum of the oxidation numbers have to add up to minus two because that's the overall charge of the ion. All right, and there are three oxygens, so I have to take that into account. 
So although the salt, each oxygen is minus two, okay, uh, there are three of them. And so when I go and do the math, all right, I can find that this sulfur here is an oxidation number of plus four. All right, ooh, here's a good one, all right. Sodium, we know the sodium ion has a charge of plus one. Group one metal cations, very predictable. We know the oxygens, whoa, I wrote down minus 13, silly, silly. All right, minus two, but there are 13 of them, okay? So there are four tungstens. We don't have a rule for tungsten, but we know the sum of the charges, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to be zero. So four times whatever the oxidation number is of tungsten plus two times the oxidation number of sodium, which was plus one, plus 13 times the oxidation number of oxygen, which was minus two, they all have to add up to zero. A little bit of algebra, I get an oxidation number of plus six for the tungsten, right? Because all I did was solve for that missing piece. I think there's one more practice problem. All right, KMnO4, potassium permanganate, really important compound. So the potassium has an oxidation number of plus one. Each oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. There's not a strict rule for manganese. Manganese can take a range of oxidation states. All right, but when we go and do our algebra, all right, we have one potassium, we have four oxygens each at minus two, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to be zero. We're going to get plus seven for the manganese. That's a really high oxidation number. This is a very reactive substance because getting to a lower oxidation number gets stability. I hope you feel really comfortable with doing your oxidation number assignments, and we'll meet another time.